So as you may know, if you've watched my channel, I have two little girls. That is all I know with parenting is uh, raising little girls. But I also have a nephew who is around the same age as Soap and Clay Kidlet number one. And I know nothing about boys. So the only way that I have found to connect with him is through a hobby and a pastime that we both really, really enjoy, which is video games. And that seems like a kind of random way to start a soap video. But as you know, I'm only random sometimes. So I'm going to tell you the connection in just a minute. But before I do, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are here for another round of 365 days of soap, and today we are doing a Minecraft soap. We're making a creeper soap in honor of my nephew's birthday. So he is turning eight, which is crazy. I have no idea where the time went. And yeah, he's super obsessed with Minecraft, and he's also obsessed with Pokemon, so you know, there's the Pokebombs for him too. But anyway, it's his birthday, and I was there the day he was born and was there and so i you know i i love that kid so much and i wanted to uh make a soap in his honor and you know put it on the youtube channel and do the thing so again today we are making a creeper soap modeled after one of the you know baddies in minecraft and it's a cool pour it's a i wouldn't exactly call it a hybrid i'd call it more of a cold process pour with some embeds because we do make some mountain pour embeds that i will then layer into the soap to make the creeper face and you know, whatever. Let's stop talking about it here and we'll go check it out over there. Okay, so for this super epic, awesome Minecraft creeper soap, I am starting it off with the embeds. Now this is just melt and pour that I poured into a thin layer in the bottom of a mold, really. And now I'm just gonna cut them into squares because you know, Minecraft, lots of little squares, right? Like you're familiar with Minecraft. Everybody's familiar with Minecraft. Minecraft is amazing. So I'm just going to cut them into squares for certain parts of the uh, the creeper face, really. So, and that's what we're working on. We're working on the creeper face with all of this. And not, not the body, not the whatever, just the creeper head doing the thing because you can change your head, your skin and everything with your own characters to be, yeah. So that's why I decided to do it this way. And so again, melt and pour, I'm just going to cut them down to get ready for, you know, actually embedding them in the uh, soap at different stages so we can sort of create the, the face as we build the bar from the ground up. Now, I'm going to work with three different, actually four different green colors in this to create the, because uh, you know how Minecraft is like super pixelated, right? And it has a little, uh, squares essentially that create the big square and I, I guess I could have done it that way but uh no I'm not gonna just no that is a full sentence right there no and so I'm going to instead create a uh, a swirl that will hopefully end up looking you know like sort of like cell shaded or whatever enough that you can't really tell that it's not made up out of a whole bunch of little teeny tiny squares. And as I am getting this to emulsification, Soapically Killer number one is actually drawing me a creeper and a zombie over there in the upper right hand corner. So, you know, she's telling me all about all the things because she loves Minecraft too. And I love it as well. So I like, you know, know these things or whatever, but I love it when kids tell you things. Like they get into stuff and they're very excited 
And so I let her do the things and tell me all the stories and whatever. And I, this is brand new information to me. I didn't know that. That's super awesome. What else? Just, you know, to engage them and get them to continue to, you know, interact with me. Because at some point, my kids, my daughters, as well as, you know, my nephew, who is, I'm making this for, and, you know, my too cute for words niece, at some point they'll just stop interacting with me entirely because I'm, you know, old balls and who wants to talk to grown-ups? Yeah. So with this uh, particular oil blend that we're doing today, it is just a 50-50 split, very kind of basic. We've got the uh, coconut oil and palm oil for the hard oils, and that's 50% of the, the batch. And then olive oil, canola oil, and grapeseed oil for the other 50% of the liquid oils. So that's that's that. Pretty pretty basic. It's going to create a nice medium density bubbles. Pretty good lather. Moisture is going to be pretty good because we are super fatting this at about 6%. And the scent blend has kaolin and bentonite in it. So we have kaolin clay and bentonite mixed up in the scent blend here. And the scent blend itself, <sighs> I asked Subclay Killer number two or number one what it should smell like and she said, said it should smell like rotting flesh. And I went, that sounds gross. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And so I made it smell like lilies and gardenias because both of those things to me smell rotten. Other people love them, but that's just, it smells like rotting flowers to me. So that's what we're going with for the scent blend. Okay, now we are on to the pour. Now I'm doing this in a log mold. So essentially we're going to be building the creeper head from, you know, the bottom up from the chin up essentially with all of this and so I'm going to do just some very vari variations on the different you know colors that we have going on there with kind of like you know chartreuse is that chartreuse like the puke green that yeah and then the darker green as well as the the light green you know base and I will just be pouring that in and then just kind of wiggling it around a little bit to get to so it covers the entire base of the soap of the mold there and then I will put the first layer of um, the embeds in to create you know a portion of like the downturned mouth of a creeper right because all of the little like all the baddies in Minecraft they all have different kind of faces right like the only real difference between a zombie and a creeper is the the colors of green are a little bit different but also like the zombies just have two eyes and maybe a nose I forget but they don't have you know, like the, the mouth and the creeper has the mouth that's like downturned, like it's frown. So that's what I'm doing. And I want to make sure that they get close enough together that I can put the next piece of the mouth on and it won't be sticking out, you know, too terribly far and there won't be too much dead space between the three black pieces, essentially. And there can be some space. So the cold process soap that exists sort of next to um, the embeds or between the embeds that that's fine because again this is a very like pixelated type video game or whatever with all these different squares and you know, whatever and I don't even know if that's the right word pixelated that's the word I always use to describe Minecraft and nobody has corrected me but also I'm not one to be corrected when it comes to words which is a thing but you see how the soap batter is getting kind of grainy? Yeah, that's what happens with like all florals that I use. It definitely does some ricing. Now ricing is when essentially your fragrance oil is kind of binding to the harder oils in the, the batch and like firming them up faster so they're turning back into the, their like, you know, solid state or whatever. And some people lose their mind over ricing. Like, oh my batch is ruined and it's terrible. but. Honestly, I have poured some really messed up soap, some soap that has been super riced, and I, you know, glop it into the mold and pound it down and, you know, bang it with my spatula and, you know, whatever. And the next day I cut it, I'm convinced that it's going to be terrible, and that's not the case. It, you can't even tell that it riced. It's, it smooths itself out during saponification. So, you, you know, I, I tend not to care too terribly much about ricing anymore. I, I showed you once where I actually tried to stick blend ricing out, like, you know, you're told to do or whatever, and I don't know. I think it made it a bigger pain in the butt to work with. It definitely made it thicker, and I don't think the ricing went away. 
So I just don't bother with that. I just do the thing. Okay, so we put the mouth in as well as the nose, and now these are the eyes. They're going on last, and then the rest of the soap will go over the top of all of this. And I'm flying blind at this point as far as placement of the um, the different you know embeds. I wish I could say that I knew exactly where everything was, but you know I didn't like mark anything out on the top of the molds or anything to determine that. And I certainly didn't take a calculator out and say, well, it has to go this far in. And did you see me take any? No, I didn't do any of that. So I am flying blind and hoping that it all ends up, you know, lining up appropriately throughout the bar. So it looks like a creeper face. And yeah, so Soap and Clay Kidlet number one, she's totally giving me, you know, pictures at this point to show me, here's a creeper, here's a zombie, and this is an Enderman. And she decided at that moment that she wanted to do an Enderman soap. So hopefully I remember to, to do one for her because she was really into the fact that we're doing this for uh, my nephew. For, you know, again, this is his birthday. Happy birthday, nephew, eight-year-old. Awesome. Only nephew, only boy in the whole family. I feel bad for him. Like he's, he's it. He's got a sister and I have two little girls and he's the only boy. But, you know, he, he makes it work. And Minecraft allows me to continue talking to him until again he doesn't want to talk to me because I'm old balls so this guy is ready to get uh, set aside for saponification and we will cut it tomorrow okay now it is time to cut now I said it was gonna get set aside instead of sea popped because this has a lot of melt and pour inside in the embeds and I did not want them to weep and melt and the face would get weird so as a result, the color didn't end up as bright as I really wanted it, but so far it's actually looking pretty cool. I think it'll be fine. You know what's not looking cool? You see my, uh, <laughs> oh god. So you see my left hand there and how awful it looks? Like I have some sort of skin disease? It's, yeah. So like, I don't know, 12 hours before I cut this soap, I, uh, I got stung by a mosquito. Just a mosquito. It was not a big deal. And my hand did this to the point where it's so big and fat that I can't get it into large gloves. Now I normally wear small gloves, right? My hands are not big and large gloves would not even go on this hand. And so I've got this crazy elephant looking hand thing going on here while I'm cutting these soaps. I look like I have a skin condition, which actually is kind of fitting um, because we're cutting a creeper and yeah and look how cute that is isn't that the most adorable thing ever it's not a skin condition by the way I got you know I'm allergic apparently it's a thing I, I didn't realize that you could just develop allergies when you're old but I did that and that is so cute oh my gosh look at that look at that creeper that is adorable oh my gosh now the soap is still really soft and so I'm just smoothing out all of the edges just with my finger and then you don't have to, you know, plane and bevel, which is nice. One extra step you don't have to do. And you're going to look at all your bars anyway, so you might as well just smooth out the, the edges while you're looking at them because, yeah, it so serves a dual purpose. You get to admire your awesome handiwork and also clean up your soaps. But these are really cute and uh, the scent it smells like lilies and gardenias and a lot of people really love that. I do not. I think that smells rotten. So I, you know, I'm sure if you like lilies and gardenias, you will find it enjoyable. But if you have my nose, because everybody's nose is different and the things that they smell, you'll go, oh yeah, no, it smells like, like rotten. And you know, whatever. It, me and flowers, me and florals, we don't get along in soap, like just in general. I don't do a whole lot with them. Although weirdly we've done a lot of them on the channel because I've let other people pick what blends to do, like the Soap and Clay Kidlets, and they're always picking flowers. So yeah, but that is a very, very cute soap. I love those, and I am assuming that my nephew will at least roll his eyes and say, it's a creeper, when I show it to him, and I will count that a success, really, because that's pretty high praise from an eight-year-old boy, in my experience, really. And uh, yeah, that's uh, day 122, the Creeper Soap, in honor of my nephew's eighth birthday, kid who loves Minecraft and Pokemon and all the things, more than 
I do, which is actually really saying something. So happy birthday, kid. Thanks for being born. Come on, that's totally cute. And you know, if you don't think it's a complete creeper, just call it abstract and we can roll with that. I really did have a lot of fun making this soap. It was very cool to do this sort of uh, different gradients with the greens to give it like the, cause you know how Minecraft is super pixelated and yeah. So I thought that the best way to do that with the uh, green surrounding the face would be to do, you know, an in the pot swirl and some gradients and, you know, pour it with the thin lines and then cut it normal so you could get that effect. And ultimately I had fun. I thought it was cool. And if you think it's cool too, and you would like a creeper soap of your very own, yeah, you can find it on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in following me on social media, I'm there, do the things, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And if you are interested in more soapy stuff, you should subscribe to the channel because we're doing this every day. And for that, uh, this does it for me today. And I do want to wish my nephew a very happy birthday today. I'm so proud of you. It's You're eight now, it's, it's insane. You're all grown up, you're ready to take on the world and happy birthday. And uh, for the rest of you whose birthday it is not, Happy un-birthday or whatever, and I will uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.